Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We are so grateful to you this evening for bringing us together like this. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you would lead us and you would speak to us. Father, this is an important thing that we're going to discuss tonight. And we need you, Holy Spirit. We need you not only to speak to us, but we need you to bring us great and deep understanding. And also we need you to deliver us. We need you to set us free. We need you to renew our minds. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, um, you are all welcome. Um, yep, it's um, a very good day. And I know that those are online. Uh, we have... Um, We have KPGM back uh, as a church <laughs> meeting together in a physical place. And uh, we are thankful to God for what he's doing. Tonight we're going to really talk on an, an important topic that I believe even as we went through the crisis that we went through and we are still going through. Um, many things are happening and the enemy is trying to take advantage of us but tonight I want you to pay attention wherever you are watching from and I want you to really understand that God knows your situation and God is desirous to bring you the freedom that you need amen we are going to talk about the mind and uh, the theme for tonight is victory over your mind victory over your mind beloved by the end of this i mean the objective for tonight is to learn how to overcome the battle of the mind and live victorious over your thoughts because many of us we are in a place where the enemy is bombarding us and feeding our minds with things that really distract us. There's so much distraction. And I can tell you that the enemy is really manipulating minds in the season. And because of that, many people are, are living in error. They're making a lot of Massive, I mean, huge mistakes. People are running away. People are hearing wrongly. People are making wrong decisions that is affecting other parts and aspects of their life. All because there is a kind of manipulation going on in our minds. A lot of things are going on in our minds. And because of that, we are unable to really allow the, the presence of God, the Spirit of God, to speak to us. And even when he's speaking to us, we are confused in our minds. And the one in interesting thing is that when the devil is really bringing his thoughts, what he does is that, you know, there, there are certain areas that are pleasing to us. Hallelujah. There are certain things that we, 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 we like. So what he does is that, He's going to bring something in that kind of area, something that you like, something that will entice you, something that will draw your attention. So when he brings that, what happens is we tend to fall for it. Now, God is not going to let you compromise on his uh, uh, principles, which we want to. I mean, we always want to compromise. True or false? Exactly. So... God is not going to allow you to compromise. 
And because he's not going to allow you to compromise, the devil is bringing something that will really let it be easy for you to align with. And the moment you go for it, he begins to now hit you on the other side. And I want you tonight, I just want you to really pay attention and we'll look at what the Bible is saying. Amen. Okay. Um, so let's read from Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. Are we there? Okay. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Now, as he thinks in his heart, how can you think in your heart? Hallelujah. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Beloved in the Lord, the heart is where major decisions are made. That is why sometimes you, you are told not to allow your head to rule but your heart. Amen. The heart, whatever you will do, whatever you will say, Bible doesn't say it comes from your mind, it says from your heart. Hallelujah. So the heart has a I mean, a strong influence on your mind and what you do. It is what, that is why Jesus says that. You can, you can say stuff which could just come from your mind and it's not something that you mean it. Jesus wants things that from your heart. He says, you speak or you, uh, you praise me with your mouth, but your hearts are far away from me. What he needs is your heart. So the enemy... Uh, is always going to go after your heart. Although the battle is in the mind, it ha he has to get your heart involved in it. So, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Hallelujah. Your heart must be in your worship. Your heart must be in what you're doing with the Lord. And what the enemy is trying to do is to have that access to your heart. And if he has access to your heart, you have access to your mind. And if he has access to your mind, he will now begin to control. Hallelujah. And therefore, so, I mean, that is why he says, but his heart, is, um, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As a person is thinking in his heart, so is he. What you think about, what you really reflect on on a regular basis will really have an influence on what you do and how you carry yourself hallelujah many thoughts go through our minds every day i mean today you have thought about many things hallelujah half of it probably is from the devil <laughs> Maybe some people, it's uh, maybe 75% is from the devil and 25% is from God. Amen. But many things are going through our mind and not everything that is going through our mind is from God. You are a Christian, I'm a Christian. But not everything that is going through our mind is from God. I will let you understand this as we go on because the devil is always, and a lot of the things, if we talk about even the temptation of Jesus, it is not like I don't think the devil was standing in front of him. It was a mind game that he was playing. Bring in the thoughts. And I believe that you and me, we go through this every day, every moment, where uh, it's like, yeah, steal. No, oh, don't steal. No, God says that stealing is bad. So I will steal. No, steal. Then he will bring something else. You know, that's what he did with Jesus. Just playing that kind of game. And that's what he did with Eve playing the same kind of game and I will, I will let you understand when we come to a point I will bring that into the picture and you will see hallelujah so we must what we need to do and what we're going to try to do tonight is we need to really understand that not every thought that come to us is from God there are thoughts that come from the devil and there are thoughts that come from God what do I do with what comes to me hallelujah 
what do I do? Every single day, there's a battle ongoing in our minds. Hallelujah. Um, today, you have gone through a lot of battle. There are a lot of things that the enemy wanted to, you to do that probably you didn't do. There are some also that you succumbed to it and you did. Hallelujah. So, we, we all go through things. I mean, if Jesus went through it, who are you to say that you will not go through it? Amen. So you go through it, I go through it, everyone goes through it. In fact, bishop, uh, a pope even goes through it. Everybody goes through it. We need to come to that understanding. And, and that's why, I mean, by the grace of God, what we're discussing or what we're looking at is the battle is the Lord. And this is one of the things that we've been, because every one of us is going through a certain kind of battle. Your battle could be the battle of your thoughts. And there are people that are really struggling. And I, I, have, a, I have someone to share something with us tonight. He's not yet, yet, yet here, but he, when he comes, he's going to share an experience that he had to go through last week. I didn't know this was what we we're going to teach today because, uh, and, I mean, when I, when I began to, I said, I called him and I said, are you willing to share what you went through last week with us? He said, yeah, because we prayed about it anyway. So, the person will come and he will share. So I, I want you to really understand. And you probably might be able to identify it. There are many things that you have done wrong which you wouldn't have done if you had really been able to, when the thoughts came, you had known what to do with the thoughts. Hallelujah. Many of us, I'm not, you see, I don't want, I don't want to say that you did wrong no that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that what you did if you knew what you had to do because many people don't know what they have to do when they are really when they get those thoughts they can't i mean they don't know what to do with it they can't process it they just fall for it and sometimes it's re they do it reluctantly because it's like the thing is pushing at them and they don't want to do it but they don't know. I mean, it's too nice to really refuse. But at the back of your mind, the word of God is really prompting you that this is not it. And you are battling, you are fighting, and you don't even know what to do. But tonight, my prayer is that God will give you ideas. Hallelujah. And you will understand it and you will do it. Amen. So this, this is, this is a, an interesting evening. How, I mean, how we will learn how to overcome the battle of the mind. Amen. Okay, so what is the mind? What is the mind? The, the mind, okay. Our mind is a territory that can be won by the enemy. And that is why we must always be prepared to prevent it from being occupied by him. It is where we process a lot of uh, our thought patterns. Hallelujah. It is where the battle for our lives really uh, goes on. Because do this, don't do this. If you will go to heaven, you will need to. That's why Bible says that be transformed by what? Renewing of your mind. If you will be transformed, your mind has to be renewed. If you come to Christ and your mind is not renewed, the problem is that it will be easy for you to be manipulated. In fact, your transformation will never be complete until your mind is renewed. Because Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me show you this. How can I, how can I decide that I will come to church when my mind is not renewed and what my old life is for me this evening to be at the pub to drink? Hallelujah. The transformation that will really, I uh, mean, uh, uh, show in my life or manifest in my life that I have transitioned from that to this will have to happen by the renewing of my mind for my mind to know that this is not right. 
Hallelujah. So I need to let go. Because if I can, it is not by anything that the Bible says that be ye do what? Be ye what? By the so if you your mind is not renewed, you will not be transformed. So the renewal of your mind comes before you will experience transformation in your life. So many of us, our minds are not renewed. So we say we are Christians, but we live in the old lifestyle. Why? Because our minds have not been renewed. Until such a time that our minds will be renewed, I'm telling you, it's going to be tough and difficult for you to be able to begin to live a transformed life. So you see many Christians today, they are saying that, I am a Christian. But they are still standing where they were, doing exactly what they used to do. But Sunday after Sunday, they will go to church. If you speak to him about something that is really crucial in the Bible, his mind is not able to even grasp it because it's not renewed. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. That mind cannot process this. How can you tell me that somebody died on the cross 2,000 years ago and then he saved me? So the person, somebody can say that I am for Christ now, but everything that he's doing is not in conformity with what Christians do. Everything that he's doing is just things that are in his past life now what does the bible say second uh corinthians 5 17 what does it say if someone is in christ all things behold everything is what hallelujah so how can you be a new person but think in the old way how can you put um new wine in old wine skin. Hallelujah. It won't work, beloved. It will not work. So we need to really come to that kind of understanding that we will have to really see ourselves as transformed people. And that can only happen when our minds are renewed. Hallelujah. And the enemy knows that. So he's consistently fighting with us in our minds and uh, there's a cycle of thoughts cycle of thoughts hallelujah cycle of thoughts now what is a thought a thought is an unspoken hallelujah it's an unspoken word a thought is still a word but it's not spoken in your mind hallelujah but it is activated the moment you speak it. As long as you have not spoken it, it, is still, it remains a thought. But it is as activated to become a word the moment you speak it. And when you speak it, it has power. Hallelujah. And every, every thought has a cycle. It has a beginning and it has an end. It will begin, you will begin to think about something and you can either kill it and not allow it to go its full cycle and really become a reality or you can entertain it and allow it to really happen hallelujah so we all need to really be careful when a thought comes we will look at when a bad thought comes to your mind what do you do with it but we'll get there hallelujah we have good thoughts and we are bad thoughts. True or false? Okay. Good thoughts come from God. Bad thoughts come from Satan. Because God is never going to give you a bad thought. He's not bad. He's, a, he's not going to give you a bad thought. So every bad thought comes from Satan. And when a bad thought comes from Satan, first thing you need, crucify it. Cut it off. Hallelujah. Don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. It is sent to you for a purpose. Many of us have...
kept consistently entertaining bad thoughts and reflecting on it and I mean it's like a baby we just keep really cuddling it we, we just play around with it and as you are pr- playing around it with it you know what you are doing you are trying to give him a place to settle but unfortunately we don't know beloved in the Lord the devil will always bring a bad thought. But you need to know what to do with that bad thought. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we don't deal with it, it keeps, like I said, it's a cycle. So it will come again. And it keeps growing. So that is why you see, and, and you can identify with it, I can identify with it, because we've all gone through it. And some of us still go through it. Even though we are Christians, we are in church, we still go through these things. And therefore, we always are vulnerable. We are always vulnerable. Because we, are, we keep allowing it to continue to influence us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't deal with it, some of us, you know what we do? Sometimes we leave it. We don't really allow. Okay, we will not really succumb to it today, but we also don't deal with it. Hallelujah. We also, let me give you a typical example. You get a thought to really uh, steal something. The first thing you need to do is to cut it and let uh, the, the thought know that it is against the word of God. I'm not going to do this. And you kill it. But if you begin to, okay, I mean, okay, it's not right. It's not right. Okay, let me leave it. I mean, okay. And you don't deal with it. You overlook it and you leave. Beloved in the Lord, Obed of you. Mr. Obed, it will come again. When he comes again, he will try, the first one didn't work, so he will try something else. Because maybe he wanted you to take this one. Actually, this is not something really, really indeed that you need. So you are able to overcome it. But you didn't kill it with the fact that it's a sin. So I'm not going to do it. You, You understand what I mean? So you put it at bay, but you haven't killed it. Amen. The next time, he's going to come with something else that probably you need. And I'll show you that when, we, when I, I'm, I'm talking to you about what Jesus, Jesus' temptation and what he had to go through. I will, I'll just let you um, understand it better. So he will continue to come until that cycle is broken. Because if you don't break it and you don't cut it off and you don't destroy it, the devil is not going to leave you alone. He will come again and come again until he makes sure. That's why, I mean, there are people, let me tell you something. There are people, both boys and girls, men and women, male, female, let me say male, female, because I don't want to use any age category. Both male and female. Many people have fallen into fornication and adultery because when the thought came at first, they didn't kill it. They didn't. They tried to put it at, okay, no, this guy, no, this girl, no. Then they put it somewhere. But it's a cycle. So it goes on and it will come again. Until such a time that you kill it and let that thought know that it is evil and I'm, going, I'm not going to do it because it's a sin against God. The only way Joseph was able to run, regardless of, the, of, of, of uh, the, the possibility that he will go to prison if the woman reports, her, or reports him, the only reason he was able to run away was he didn't want to sin against God. So he knew it was a sin. But remember that he had played around with it for far too long. He had played around with that woman for far too long. Because that was not the first day the woman made a pass at at him. Hallelujah. 
It's been going on. And he said, oh, oh, no, please. You are my boss's wife. How can I do that? Okay. You know, in, 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 in our local, uh, uh, um, I mean, like, local circles, you know, there's a thought that, oh, even if a, if, uh, a man tells a woman that uh, I like you and she says yes, then it means that she's cheap. So she has to really bluff a little bit. You, you know, you haven't killed it. And every man knows that. So they'll keep pushing. Hallelujah. They'll forget that you're a Christian. Because every woman does that. Hallelujah. So until such a time that you will make a decision that, look, I'm not going to, I mean, look, this is my position. But unfortunately, many of us, both men and women, we are unable to because we, we sometimes feel that, okay, we don't want them to feel bad. Amen. You want to go to hell? Than letting somebody feel bad? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you need to really be bold to kill it. And he kept tell, pushing it aside, pushing it aside until the last minute, the woman got him alone. And he had to go to prison for that. If he had killed it earlier, I don't think he would have probably gotten to that point. Amen. Hallelujah. So, all that you are saying, when a bad thought comes to me, what do I do with it? Number one. When a bad thought comes to your mind, when you get a bad thought, the first thing you ought to do is reject it. Reject it. Bring it captive to the obedience of Jesus. Reject it. If you don't reject it and you play around with it, it's going to really hurt you. What did Jesus do? Hallelujah. What did Jesus do when he was tempted? He killed it. And the devil came to him and first began, because Jesus had done a 40-day fast, he was hungry. The Bible says he was hungry. So, like I told you earlier, he's going to bring something that you want. So, this guy is hungry. Let me try this one. So, he first says that, okay, you, got, you are hungry, huh? You just finished a 40-day fast. But there's no food in the wilderness. They don't, nobody sells bread. Nothing. But I know after 40 days, there's so much power in you. You can do anything. Why don't you turn these stones into bread and eat? Now, maybe you hadn't thought about that. So immediately it came, oh yeah, I have power to turn stones into bread. Does God approve that at that time that's what you have to do? Actually, is it a sin to turn stones into bread if I have the power to do that? But a circumstance and who is giving you that thought? You need to descend quickly. So the moment he descend, the devil was around. What he did was, okay, if I do that, it will mean I am obeying him. And I don't have to obey him. He doesn't have to instruct me. He doesn't have to tell me what to do. Now, turning bread, uh, stones into bread is not a sin. Yet, if you obey the devil to do what he wants you to do, that becomes a sin. Amen. Look, there are many things that, many decisions we are making that are so wrong and so sinful, we play around with them. So Jesus said, no way, I'm not doing that. And he uses scripture to counter it. How many scriptures do you know to be able to counter the thoughts that the enemy is going to bring to you? How many scriptures do you have? Hallelujah. But he is not, like I said, it's a cycle. So he is not ending with you there. So he goes to the next thing and he says, okay, I mean, I know you have power, and I know your father says he has power. 
and he he's even said that if you jump from anything he won't let your foot strike a stone or whatever so okay let's go and uh jesus stands on this top uh hill and then he says jump down and the truth of the matter is that if he jumps god will really save him anyway but the point is that who are you obeying so he goes like, yeah, I know. And that scripture as well, he will save me. But I also know another scripture that tells me that I don't have to put him to test. Why would I have to be jumping on every... It's like God, oh, hey, I have power. God protects me. Okay, just follow me. I'm going to stand in the middle of the street. I'm not a magician. God is not a magician. And let's see whether the car will hit me and I will die. Amen. Try it. You will be Allah should be funeral home. Amen. The point is that you can't put God to test. Hallelujah. What is the essence of that? Why would you? Is it? Are you showing off? What are you trying to do? Hallelujah. So he's trying to manipulate you, and it is not always that he's going to manipulate you with bad thoughts. He's going to manipulate you with certain thoughts that don't seem to be bad. But you need to discern and decipher from what is coming to you. What is from the Lord and what is from the devil. Because if you are unable to do that, what's going to happen is that you will always be doing things thinking that God approves of it. But God doesn't approve of it. And that is why God says that there are people who do miracles and he doesn't even know them. They will come to me and say, I don't know you. But did they do wrong? They healed the sick anyway. But he says, yeah, you did that, but I... I don't really recognize you. Did I ask you to do that? Did you do it for me? Who did you do it for? Hallelujah. We ought to be very careful. So when bad thoughts come, the first thing we ought to do with a bad thought is to reject it. Hallelujah. Number two. So we can choose to reject Number two is that we can choose to entertain it. Now, the Lord is not going to, I have had a bad thoughts. What do I do? I have choices. The first choice is to reject it. The second choice is that you can choose to entertain it. You can choose, you can choose to reject it. You can choose to entertain it. And God is not going to really, I mean, he is there. You make that decision because you have a will. And you have to do what you want to do with your will. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what happened. The second, third, and fourth things I'm talking about are the, what really happened in the garden and which I'm going to really take you through very soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, how do you entertain it? You give it consideration. You make or you make room for it and turn it over and over inside your mind. You play around with it. You play around with it. How does it look like? What should I do with this? What should I do with this? Is it okay? What what must I do? And you keep really playing around with it. Amen. I said you keep doing what? Playing around with it. And if you keep playing around with it, what happens is that it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. I said it's doing what? It's going to do what? Come to pass. Okay, let's go to Genesis. Genesis, sorry. We're going to go to Genesis. It's okay. Oh, this is horrible. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Hello, 
just like my Bible is is behaving. Give me a second. All right, okay. Let's read from verse 1. Uh, chapter chapter 3, verse 1, yes. I wanted to go straight there, but let's read from verse 1. That gives us much more. Um. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, and let, well, watch this carefully, did God really say, what is his business with that? Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say we must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Oh no, you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What would you do at that point? What would you do at that point? And that's what happens to us most of the time. You know what happens? We get a little bit inquisitive and excited and want to know more beloved in the lord if you know your bible you stick to your bible hallelujah that is why many of us many many of us and i i, I mean uh, uh these <laughs> the young guys around me are always saying the, they are telling me stuff oh, plenty and they are telling me that there are teachings going on right now which says that uh, God has given you a brain and you need to use your brain and you need to work hard and you need to... And unfortunately, it has no scriptural basis. Hallelujah. Watch it. Let me tell you something. If that is not equal to this, I don't know what it is equal to. Because... It, it teaches men to be independent of God. Don't depend on him. But God has said, depend on me. All that the devil was telling Eve, and this was a game that he was playing with Eve in her mind. And many of us today have fallen into it. Many, you're watching me, but may, you are even confused because you're hearing that as well. And in your mind, you are confused. You're you, you asking yourself a lot of questions. You see, every question you have, the answer is in the Bible. Every question you have, the answer is in the Bible. Don't let anyone confuse you. Because what they're trying to do is watch the tactic. Watch the way they play in it. If, it's not, if you watch it closely, you will be able to discern that it's the same thing that happened in the garden. Why are you supposed to be dependent totally on God? Why did he give you a brain? God gave you a brain to use it, but he doesn't want your brain to develop so you can use it. So some pastors are telling you to depend on God, depend on God. Use your brain. Your brain is big enough to really do this, do that, do that, do that. And every day, they bring in these thoughts, bombarding you with these thoughts. And the devil, anyway, I'm, I'm going somewhere else. He's gotten agents to do that for him. Hallelujah. So be careful. You see, I'm, I'm telling you all the time. Be careful what you listen and who you listen to. It's simple. Because Paul said, you see, go into your Bible. 
Paul said it. He said that, look, some people will come after me and they will tell you things that you don't have to believe and obey. Hallelujah. And he said that even if me, I come back and tell you another gospel, don't believe it. There's only one gospel. Hallelujah. People are trying to manipulate people. And unfortunately, this battle is in our thoughts. So many of us, we don't even fall for it the same day. We get confused. And we begin to toss it around in our minds. And we begin to entertain it. Hallelujah. And as you keep entertaining it, what's going to happen is that you will fall for it. I'm telling you, you will fall for it. Let's go on. For God knows that when you eat... No, no, no. Go back. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, God is saying something to you. Somebody is telling you something else. Now, what do you believe? Because, and let's watch what the woman did. Go to the next. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Now, watch it. All the time that she's walking around, didn't see that the fruit was nice? Didn't she know that this fruit, if you look at it, wow, it, it looks nice. And if you eat, it will be nice. Didn't she know all that? But because she allowed the enemy to really manipulate her, she still chose not for the Lord. I have told you, do not dialogue with the devil. There is only one language he understands. Get up. Hallelujah. You can't, listen, you can't come find him. around with him. There is um, uh, I think what did he say over here? What is it? Like a chicken. He's trying to play around with a snake. Hallelujah. Where do you think in the next minute that chicken is going to end up? Now I know it's good for food. And I know that even if I eat, in fact, God is bad. Though. Hallelujah. God doesn't want, God is, God is, he doesn't want anybody to be like him. Ask Satan, how did he come to where he is? Hallelujah. If it is nice, he wouldn't be where he is. But he wants you to fall like he fell. Amen. And you begin to entertain that thought. He is really trying to get you out of your protection so he can show protection. I'm telling you, he's trying to get you. That's what boxers do. They try to really play around you to get you to lower your guard and then they hit you. If you stick to your guard, telling you. And what is your God? The Bible. If you can stick to the Bible, if you can check your Bible, if you can really read your Bible, if you can allow the Holy Spirit to give you understanding in the Word of God, I'm telling you, it's going to be very difficult for the devil to play around with you. Hallelujah. So, we need to, you, you have a choice either to entertain it or to rubbish it. But unfortunately, we keep entertaining it. And as we keep entertaining it, now we think about all the things, the good things that have been said about it, and we want to really try it. So many of us are trying things that is leading us into sin. But we could have really let it go at the first instance. 
Hallelujah. You can also choose to meditate on it. Number three. When a bad thought comes, number one, you, we can choose to, number one, reject it. And uh, that's the number one thing you ought to do. Just reject it, destroy it, bind it, cast it out, do whatever you want to do. But if you don't do that, the next thing you can choose to entertain it or you can choose to meditate on it. And many of us are meditating on it. Many of us, we are meditating on it. And we are unable even to pray. Hallelujah. We go and we lie down. We are making CCC. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. I think we've said this one million times here. And this is a very good example because 80% of you, I don't know you guys online, but 80% of the people who sit in our church are not married. So I love to use this example. Don't make CCC with men or women. Hallelujah. Some people say that, oh yeah, you have seen three girls, I don't know which one. Stop making the CCC. Hallelujah. Hmm. Pray. Hallelujah. If you make CCC, you make CCC with your eyes. Begin to pray and ask yourself, where, what do I want to achieve in my walk with God? And is this person going to really help me get there? He goes to church. In fact, when he fasts, he breaks at 12. You break at 6. You go 3 days. And you want to carry this. You begin not to even do the fast at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you need to understand, who am I in the Lord? Because the devil is going to bring all kinds of things. All kinds of things. And instead of you to make a decision based on the word of God to reject it or to really uh, cast it out or whatever or bring it before the Lord, now you are, you, you are meditating on it every day. And then you go and sit down. Instead of reading your Bible, you are meditating on men and women. Is that what you do? Hallelujah. Don't meditate on it. Make a decision with it. Hallelujah. Pray about it. Bring it before the Lord. Let God help you to really make a good decision on it. Hallelujah. Don't carry it along. I mean, what is wrong is wrong. Don't carry it along in your mind for far too long. Make a decision with it. And a quick one. Hallelujah. And number four, you can choose to cultivate it. And as you entertain it, you play around with it, meditate on it, carry it on for a longer period of time. The last thing is that by the time you realize you have cultivated it and it's bearing fruit. Hallelujah. So it's a choice either to reject it, entertain it, meditate on it, or allow it into full fruition and it becomes a sin in your life. He, did, he came to test your pulse. And you kept giving him an opportunity. The devil, when he, you know, this, this, if you look at uh, these two, Jesus' temptation, and, and that's why the Bible talks about the first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam fell when the temptation came. The second Adam stood. Hallelujah. Now, what example are you going to follow? You ought to follow Jesus' example. He never had time to entertain that nonsense. He had the word of God to really counter it. You are becoming, we, okay, not you, but me and you. We are becoming like Eve. We are becoming like the first Adam. But we're supposed to be like the second Adam. Hallelujah. We're not supposed to be like the first Adam. The first Adam entertained it until it became a sin. The second Adam rejected it and it left his life. Hallelujah. So what are you doing? What decisions are you making? When the thoughts come, what choices do you make? You can choose to reject it like Jesus did. 
Jesus rejected that. I'm not going to turn stones into bread. Jesus rejected that. Yes, even though what you are saying is indeed scriptural, but I know that, yes, it's scriptural, but it's there for a reason. What you are asking me to do is not the reason. If I am falling, if you push me and I'm falling, he will catch me. But he's not asking me to put him to test by jumping by myself. Hallelujah. If you go on the street and by us that the car hits you, God is going to save you. Hallelujah. But if you intentionally go and stand in the middle of the road, you will die. You make a choice. Hallelujah. I said you'll do what? You will die. Don't put the Lord your God to test. There are times, there are times, I mean, I, I, look, in my early days as a believer, there are times you are failing with certain things and the devil is telling you, why are you living? Listen to me. It, it didn't go to the point that I have to really take some medicine and drink. But I was questioned many times, why are you living? It was like there's no purpose for you. I'm telling you. And those days, I will, it helped me. I mean, uh, what helped me to overcome was the Bible. Because I loved to read the Bible at the time. I loved it. And that's why I'm always pushing you guys to read the Bible. So all that I will do is that I will go and take the Bible and begin to read. And let me tell you, in the early days, that was the worst part. That was the worst part. The moment you take the Bible to read, your mind is going to fire away. And you are reading the Bible and you don't understand anything. And it's so frustrating. And then the devil, like he told him that, I told you. Then he will tell you that you're just wasting your time. He will tell you, you're just wasting your time. And then you, you don't know what to do. And you are a new believer. Hallelujah. Hmm. That's a strong battle. And let me tell you this. The moment you begin going through that, you need to really begin to counter it with the word of God. Because if you don't do that, he will take control. Because all that he's trying to do, he comes whispering to you lies. And these lies become like that. Really. And then, unfortunately, many of us, we don't even know what's coming up, up to us. And we begin to really entertain the thoughts. And it's most of the time things that you are familiar with. Things that you are familiar with. Just like he did to Jesus. You know, you are hungry. Bread. You know, you have power. Jump. Because Jesus has said it is written. Okay, if it is written, you know this one too is written. It's written that when you jump, he will catch you. So jump. And then he counter it with another scripture. Then he comes to the ultimate. Bow before me and I'll give you everything. And that is what gets at, at us. You know we want everything. Or you don't want. Ah. Even, uh, when was the last time? Uh, yesterday, I think yesterday I asked, when was the last time you prayed about your, uh, I mean, like to go to heaven? All your prayer is, God, give me a car. <laughs> give, me, give me a breakthrough. Give me a new job. Give me promotion. Give me business contracts. Give me the, is that not what you pray for? Give me a nice woman to marry. Me, I'm married. I'm not one of them. Uh, I'm already married. And you, the young guys, or give me a nice man to marry. And many of them are saying that, me, I want a man with a cow because me, my nanti ache. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's also looking for a woman with a car. Amen. Yeah, but you throw these darts at you to poison and convince us that those, I mean, those thoughts sometimes we, we may to believe that it even originates with us and it comes from us. The devil is let me tell you this before I even move on. One of the tricks of the devil is 
he always wants you to ignore him. He doesn't want you to focus on him. He doesn't want you because if you believe or if you begin to think that this is the devil, you're going to pray. But if you think that it's your own thoughts, you don't accuse him, you don't do anything to him, and he continues to really manipulate you and fight you. But if you begin, hallelujah, to attack him, to believe that it's him. So what he, what he wants you to do is for you to ignore him. Don't, don't, that's why many, of, many people are telling you that, look, it's not the devil. Why is it that everything you say is the devil? It's not the devil. It's you. It's your mind. It's your lifestyle. It's this. Yes, lifestyle plays a role, but who got you into that lifestyle in the first place? God, cre God didn't create us to be rebellious to him. Somebody got us rebellious. Hallelujah. So we need to really, you know, most of the time, what we do is we just cut the branches and leave the roots there. And it keeps going again and it keeps affecting us instead of us really getting serious and getting to the root and cutting in of the root we begin to entertain and to really uh play around with it amen so we ought to be careful hallelujah so whether this thought is going to develop or not depends on you it's your choice what you choose to do with a battle that came to you so my my thing is that when the battle comes just reject it. Just reject it and pray against it. Because it's not coming and because we rejected it, it's not going to come again. It will come again. The devil is never tired. He's going to keep bombarding you until you give up. When he came to Jesus, he didn't stop. He, I mean, he started one thing. Jesus really said, it is written. He, start, he went to another thing. He went to another thing. If he went to add, add three things with Jesus... He's going to go with ten things, uh, uh, over 10 things with you because he knows that he can. And even with that, he told Jesus that I will come again at an opportune time. So it's not a one-day affair. This battle is ongoing. The battle is raging on. But we have uh, the, 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 the power that has been given to us by God because the battle is the Lord's and he's going to fight for us. But he's equipped us to really overcome. Amen. Amen. But, Apostle, how do I know that this thought is of the devil? How do, do I know that this thought is not from God? The first thing is that it will be against the word of God. It will be against the word of God. It will be unjust. It will be ungodly. And the moments you really see this you know that this is not of god this thought is not from god hallelujah and if you don't deal with it you end up becoming it if the thought comes to your mind to fornicate and you don't deal with it you will fornicate you become it hallelujah so when the thought comes you need to begin to deal with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of the addictions that we have, drugs, pornography, alcohol, and I can tell you for a fact that many people, many, this is unbelievable, but many of the people that I've dealt with uh, in terms of uh, pornography and masturbation, people that have prayed with on that issue, majority of them will tell you that it began when I was 11 or 12 years. I don't know what is wrong with 11 and 12. No, I'm telling you the truth. This is, this is not a story. I have dealt with many people, I've prayed for many people who have that issue, and I can tell you for a fact that about 80 to 90 percent didn't start in adulthood. They started when they were 10 or 11, uh, no, 11 or 12. 11 or 12. I have still had people who probably were nine years old or something when they got involved. Watch it. Watch it. Ask yourself. You will realize that indeed that is the truth because I have experiences with people that tell me. I just counsel them and they tell me. Hallelujah. But the point is that, you know, the devil wants them young. Because if it's me and you, 
we are grown enough to probably some of the things deal with it but he's starting with very young people who are very vulnerable hallelujah so many of the addictions that we have um they they really become reality uh because when it starts with it it started with a thought we didn't deal with it we entertained it we 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 tried it we played around with it we encouraged it and then it ends up destroying us hallelujah hallelujah and and a lot of more times some of them will come looking like it's godly hallelujah let me tell you and and these things are so real that i want you to really understand Maybe you have heard it, but you don't know how it's working. But I'm telling you, it looks so normal. It looks so, and, and that the devil begins to tell you that, after all, you're going to marry her. After all, you're going to marry him. What's wrong with it? It's the same person. And some people, now, the, we glorify fornication by saying that, in fact, I have only one. Somebody has two. Me, I have one. So that's not sinful enough. Who decides what is sin? Who decides? Are we sure? And what does he say? He says fornication is a sin. He didn't say when you have two girls or two boys. Hallelujah. What am I saying tonight? And, and, and we also really need to understand that lust is even a sin. Hallelujah. So the devil will say that, oh, just watch it. It's nothing. I mean, just watch it. Hallelujah. And you begin to watch. If you are not careful, you even get an accident. Hallelujah. The point is that, what is God saying? What is God saying? There's a difference between what God is saying and what man is saying. But what is God saying in that kind of instance, in that kind of circumstance? What is God saying? And unfortunately, many of us are not listening to what God is saying. We are not studying to know what God is saying, so we e easily fall for it. Beloved in the Lord, the things that we don't want to hear in church are the very things that are destroying us. They are the things that are destroying us because we don't want to hear these things. But I, look, everyone on the, on the broadcast, I mean, if you are watching me online or if you are sitting right here, we are all going through these battles. We trying to live in, 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 in um, uh, denial. Hallelujah. And that is another trap, another scheme of the enemy. We try, we're doing the thing, but we're trying to tell ourselves that it's not real. But that's what exactly you are doing. And we're trying to really pamper ourselves, trying to really convince ourselves that it's not bad enough. But what is bad enough? Hallelujah. Oh, this is not bad enough. I'm better than this one. I'm better than that one. Beloved, that's not a reality. Let me tell you something. God loves you so much that he will send his son to die for you and for me. He doesn't want us to perish. He's done everything and he's still doing everything. Raising even people that are going to say it as raw as it is like I'm doing. And you will, we, will, we will even be hated for what we do. I'm telling you. If you say the truth, I mean, people will hate you, people will blast you, people will do everything to you, but you need grace to stand. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Because, I mean, somebody sitting in the church or watching you and then he puts it off. Don't put it off yet. Don't go off yet. Stay and listen to me because this will bless you. Many of us, oh no, I, I, can't, I can't handle that. What's that? I mean, how can I live my life? Um, yes, you can live your life living for god hallelujah and some people oh no 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 i can't take this anymore what do you what else do you want to take amen what else truth is truth hallelujah and the devil will keep manipulating your mind telling no 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 no, no this is too much for you you can't bear this no 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 no, no, no. It, it's too much uh, i mean quit 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 and and all kinds of thoughts they keep bombarding you they keep coming after you they keep really terrorizing your mind 
And the point is that he wants to achieve one thing. To get you away to a place that he can really get you and destroy you. He wants you to go away from the covering of God. Hallelujah. That's his plan. And how do we go away from the covering of God when we sin? Hallelujah. So the devil is always trying to make sure that you sin. And as soon as you sin, you know sin separates us from God. Then he gets access. And beloved, he's going to hit you hard. He's going to hit you so hard. Hallelujah. So how do we then win the battle of the mind? This battle is raging on. How do we win it? Amen. Second Corinthians chapter four verses, uh, ch- chapter ten verses four to six, and we're going to finish very soon. And then I want us to pray a little bit. We 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 need to pray. We have, um, by COVID standards, we have uh, forty-five minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have forty-five minutes, so we can pray a little bit. I'll, I'll, from here, I'm, this is my last. Uh, so okay the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds hallelujah we demolish what those are the things that you're going through there are arguments going on in your mind and you are trying to make a choice and you're trying to make a decision hallelujah and i've told you what decisions you ought to you have a you have you have every right to make a choice and what choices are you making okay we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And that's, you heard him saying that he just kept telling his mind that he take captive every thought. He take captive every thought. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is what? Once your obedience is what? Let's read the scripture. Um, James chapter 4 verse 7. And then I'll just uh, look at some four points and then we'll be done. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, we ought to resist him so he will flee. And the only way we can resist the devil for him to flee is by submitting to God. Obeying God. Doing what God wants us to do. Not really playing around with what God wants us to do. And many of us, that's where the challenge is. Beloved in the Lord, I love you so much that I want you to really understand tonight that God is giving you the grace tonight to resist the devil by submitting to him. As you submit to him, you are going to be a great overcomer. The devil is going to be. He will come anyway, but he will never succeed. Because you will be equipped enough to overcome the thoughts that he will bring. You will be equipped enough to override everything that he brings to your mind. Number one. Okay, how do we win the battle of the mind? Number one is we have to descend the wrong thoughts. If you don't know that it's a wrong thought, you will fall for it. So you need to really descend the wrong thoughts. And we have come to understand earlier that when they are unjust, when they are ungodly, and when they are contrary to the word of God, hallelujah, or they stand against the word of God, we know that they are not. So we have to have enough of scripture in us and enough of the Holy Spirit in us to really be able to discern that this is not of God. Hallelujah. It it is important that we begin to really understand that we need discernment and we can grow in discernment when we know the word of God because it's going to open your thought life. It's going to open your eyes for you to see good from bad. Hallelujah. 
You need it. You need the word of God. You can't stay away. Beloved, I'm begging you. Now, I don't beg people to do a lot of things, but I, I want you to really understand that you need the word of God. The tricks of the enemy are too much. In these last days, he knows his time is near. And because his time is near, he's doing everything to get you and to get me. Hallelujah. He's not after you alone. He is after your mother, your father, your uncle, your auntie. He's after your pastor, your sofu mami, sofu papa, sofu uncle, sofu auntie. He's after every one of them. Hallelujah. He's after you. He is after you. Sometimes he's even sitting by you trying to manipulate you. In fact, he's after your husband, your wife. He's after everything. I mean, whatever he can lay hands on, he is going to really lay his hands on. So I want you to really understand that the devil is not after you alone. He's after all of us. But we all need something that we can use. And Bible is making that. You see, you need to really be filled with the Spirit of God and with the word of God to discern that this is not of God. Because the things that he's bringing, okay, jump and God will catch you. That's the word of God. But you need to discern who is saying it. Hallelujah. You need to discern. You see, the people, they will quote scripture, but they will twist it. Hallelujah. Don't make that mistake. Give me uh, James 1.19. Don't, you see, with, uh, John 2.19, sorry. Don't make this mistake. Hallelujah. We need to understand certain things. Jesus, James, James is not John, please. You believe that there is one God. Good, you've done well. Even the demons believe that. Hallelujah. The demons, Satan himself believes there is only one God. He knows that he's fallen. He knows that he doesn't stand a chance. He knows that the lake of fire has been prepared. Let's go to Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 down. I'm, I'm showing you something. He knows where he's, he's going. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. But what is left for us? But only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Hallelujah. He knows his lusts. He knows what has been prepared for him. What has been prepared for him is the raging fire. It is raging there. It's just not his time. And let me tell you something. When Jesus encountered the demonics, what they will say is that, have you come to destroy us before our time? They know their time. They know when they are going. They know their end. But they want more people into that fire. Hallelujah. They know it. It's not like the devil doesn't know. He knows what he's doing. He knows where he's going. All that he's trying to do is to destroy you and to destroy me. And we don't have to give him that chance. Hallelujah. We don't have to give him that chance. If you give him that chance, he's going to really use it. Hallelujah. Okay, so we need to be able to descend that thought. And I'm saying it, and I'll say it again. The only way you can descend that thought well is knowing the word of God and having the spirit of God leading you. Amen. Number two, confess the wrong thought before God. If the wrong thought comes, don't try to cover it. When he came, I haven't seen him the whole week, but when he came here on, was it Saturday he came? Yeah, when he came on Saturday, he came to me and he told me, he said that this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm battling with. Hallelujah. And then we did what? We prayed about it. Many people want to cover it. They don't even want to tell God. How many of us really go to God and think God doesn't know our sins, so we try to hide it from God? Oh, you haven't tried that before? <laughs> Amen. Even in prayer, we lie. Even in prayer. When we are going to the one who knows everything and sees everything, we're still lying like God is blind. God is not like the idol in your backyard, though. He sees everything. Before you sinned, he knew you. In fact, when you were going there, listen, that is why he told uh, uh, Cain, sin is what? 
scratching at your door, be careful it does not master you. Hallelujah. That's what he told him. Before he could sin, God saw sin coming. I said, before he could do what? God saw sin coming. And he said, so when, when he sinned and God came and asked him, what have you done? He, uh, where, where's your brother? God didn't ask him, what have you done? He said, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Hallelujah. Don't you do that always? But when God was asking you, where is your brother? He knew what you have done already. So whether you are brothers keeper or not, he knew what you have done. So he can't hide. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve, after they had eaten, they were hiding from God. How can you hide from God? You remember Nathaniel? He said all that he wanted to say. And then he was dragged to Jesus. And he said, Kai. What, what good can come from Nazareth? Nazareth. Ah! Yeah, Pearl Jeffu, Papa Bia will say Nazareth. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't say anything. <laughs> the moment he saw him, he didn't say, I know your thoughts. So. He said, Ah, this is a Jew of a Jew. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus say that? It is Jews of Jews who don't really recognize Nazareth. They have that saying. Hallelujah. So he was just telling him that I knew what you were thinking. Hallelujah. And Nathaniel was like, how did you know that? He said, even when you were standing under the tree, I saw you. Ha, hey, you are the Messiah. Hey, but he's from Nazareth. Hallelujah. He's from Nazareth. How can he be the Messiah? He knows your thoughts. Hallelujah. When he told him his thoughts, he now said, you are the Messiah. Wait until God tells you your thoughts. Amen. If I pray that he will tell you your thoughts so that you know that he's the Messiah. And then you begin to. So Nathaniel became a disciple. Hallelujah. You will become a disciple. You will not just walk around like there's nothing at stake. There is something at stake. There is a heaven and there is a hell at stake. Beloved. Whatever we are doing, the reason we are sitting here tonight is that there is a heaven and there is a hell and we ought to prepare. It's simple. There is a heaven and there is a hell. The end is extremely important. If it wasn't important, look, there, is, there are certain things that Jesus said that we need to take them to heart. Seriously. Hallelujah. Jesus, after his people not because they had gone to do any small thing, no. They have raised the dead. They have cast out demons. They have healed the sick. They have done all that. Then they came to Jesus. Oh, your name. There's too much power in your name. We just have to open our mouth and demons will be fleeing. And sickness will be leaving. And people will be begging. The Satan himself was begging. Then Jesus looked at them and said, wow. You know what I saw? I saw Satan fall like lightning. You know how lightning falls? So Satan's fall is so simple for God. He said, I saw him fall like lightning. But you know what? You don't have to be happy about that. Be happy that your names are written in the book of life. Everything that you do as a Christian, be happy that your name is written in the book of life. That is the thing. Hallelujah. So anything that will take your name out, run away from it. Amen. I know you don't want to hear this, but that's what I'm telling you. That's what God wants you to hear. Amen. So you have to confess the wrong thoughts before God. Just be open. Go to him. Tell him. Just as it. And he is there for you. Hallelujah. Number three. How do we win the battle? We need to repent. Confession is extremely good, but it's not the, the ultimate. Because many of, how many of us have confessed but we've gone back to it? Almost everyone. Amen. When we repent, we turn around from it. That is why even in, I mean, when everyone comes to Christian, what is important is that the person needs to recognize that he's sinful. And because you can't force someone 
the person must come to that point that I am a sinful person. I admit my weaknesses and repent of them. Because people say the sinner's prayer without really repentance. In fact, for me, you ought to repent. It's extremely important. Not for me. I mean, just about everything. You need to repent. Because when you repent, you show remorse. Amen. Because you can tell somebody to confess and you say it and then that's it. He said it, but he never repented. So no remorse, nothing. And it's easy for them to go back to it. Hallelujah. So you need to repent. Hallelujah. And uh, when you repent, you have a change of heart. You have a change of heart. But if you don't repent, you don't have a change of heart. The thoughts are so persistent and you can just go back to it easily. Hallelujah. And number four, take every thought as we saw in that scripture. Take every thought captive to Christ and rebuke them and cast them out. Beloved in the Lord, listen, the devil doesn't understand all the big English you are saying. He doesn't understand. Hallelujah. All that he doesn't understand. The devil un doesn't understand. Hey, you, you go away from me. Hey, you, you are a bad person. No, he doesn't understand that. He understands only one language. Bind him. Cast him out. Hallelujah. That is how we deal with him. We don't pamper him. We don't play around with him. What we need to do is to take a stand. If the thought that is coming is not of him, you know, you know, you know, and you don't have to entertain it. Many of us have entertained bad thoughts. The devil has really bombarded us. Ah, don't you see that what he told you is bad? Huh? Don't you, don't you, don't, don't you know that he's taking advantage of you? Huh? Don't you know? And... Ah, look at your dress. Look how nicely you are dressed. And they want you to sweep. Ah. Ah, you are too nice for sweeping. Hallelujah. You are too nice for sweeping. Ah, don't you think that they, they are making you a slave? Ah, Bible doesn't say that too. Bible says that pray small, small. Amen. I mean, all kinds of thoughts. I remember... I won't mention names. But I remember one day somebody told us. <laughs> this is what the person said. He said that. I am Munda O Munda. Munda Kakra. Or when some non danya may be arrested. Inti Munda. Hallelujah. O Bompai Kakra, ye. Oda. You don't know my problem. If you know my problem, you tell me to keep awake. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now tell me when Jesus decided to take a rest when he was on earth. When Jesus is praying all night. You want me to go and sleep when Jesus is pray praying all night? You want me to sleep? You want me to stop praying when Jesus is leaving his people and going uh, at dawn outside to pray, to hide somewhere to pray? When everybody was sleeping, when they woke up, Jesus was not there. They began looking for Jesus and they couldn't find Jesus and they couldn't find Jesus and they couldn't find Jesus and then they saw Jesus and then Jesus, they were like, where were you? What's your business? I went to pray. Hallelujah. They've got food. Everybody's hungry to eat. And Jesus is still talking to a prostitute. Hallelujah. And the Jesus said, come and they know. Won't you eat? And sometimes, they will not even tell you. They didn't tell Jesus. They were thinking. 
And Jesus gave them a reply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus saw the enemy giving them thoughts. Bringing bad thoughts into their mind. Stop him. But Jesus knew a life needs to be saved. Hallelujah. And Jesus would do everything to save one life. Hallelujah. And Jesus did whatever he, he took. And then he spoke to one woman who was a prostitute, more or less. But he ended up winning a whole city. If you will spend a little bit more time, stop saying I don't have time. You have time. Create it. Hallelujah. If you, ha if you have time, you will save a whole city. He spoke to one woman, but he ended up saving a whole city. Don't allow, don't entertain those thoughts. Do not entertain those thoughts. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Rebuke them. When the thought comes, I rebuke this thought and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's what the devil understands. He doesn't understand all the nice things you are saying. He doesn't understand any of them. It's like speaking Latin to him. He doesn't understand. What he understands is I bind you in the name of Jesus and I cast you out. Because Bible, what does the Bible say? At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, whether in heaven or earth or under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So we need to understand the language that he understands and begin to really deal with it. Hallelujah. Now let's be upstanding. Beloved, we are, we are going to begin to next week, we're going to begin to break and we're going to really ask more questions. Tonight we didn't ask a lot of questions. We didn't even probably ask a question. I'll ask a few questions, but what we're going to do next week is we're going to break into our groups and we're going to in our various uh, homes and then we're going to really uh, have that comfort to ask uh, many questions. We have a lot of people online and we needed to really uh, do what we had to do. Amen. Alright. Okay, so beloved in the Lord, we're going to pray right now. And um, I want to know Anyone here who has ever harbored a bad thought? Okay. We're going to repent of, uh, and I'm not asking you to just confess. I want you to repent from the depths of your heart. I want you to repent and tell God that I'm not going to back to this again. I'm not going to entertain it again. I'm not saying it won't come. As for coming, you don't have control. It will come. But how, what you deal with it, whether you entertain it, whether you allow it to hang out with you or not, that's where the problem is. We're going to really pray right now, and we're going to uh, repent of uh, allowing ourselves to entertain evil thoughts. Begin to pray right now. Make uh, yourself available to God. Repent. Repent of that sin. Repent of the sin of entertaining the thought. Instead of rejecting it, you kept it, you entertained it, you really let it, allowed it to hang out with you for far too long. For far too long. So begin to repent. 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 Repent of it. Repent. Repent for entertaining bad thoughts. Repent. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to really boldly repent of it. Repent that you entertain that thought. Repent that, Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I repent. I, I, do, I don't want to do this again. I repent of entertaining every bad thought that came to me. Instead of rejecting it, I allowed it to really hang out with me for far too long. I repent of it. I repent of it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I repent of it. I just run away from it. I'm not going to really entertain it anymore. I repent of it in Jesus' name. I repent of it in Jesus' name. And ask him to forgive. 
forgive you. Ask him to forgive you. As you repent of it, I just want you to ask him to forgive you. Ask the Lord that forgive me for entertaining this bad thought. Forgive me for entertaining this thought. A lot of manipulation that is going on in our mind is from the devil. A lot of manipulation. He is manipulating our minds to really be able to run away from the Lord. Where God, he, he knows that God is going to really bring a blessing. Then he will really manipulate us and try to drag us away. He will try to really separate us uh, by leading us to sin or commit an error that will make us really be separated from the Lord. That's his plan. So just repent of it and ask God to forgive you. Repent of that sin and ask God to forgive you in the name of Jesus. Repent of it and ask God to forgive you tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to pray and break that cycle of uh, bad thoughts that come. Break it now. Break it now. Break it now. In, in, in your mind, whatever thoughts that you have really entertained, break that cycle of bad thoughts. Break it tonight in Jesus' name. Break it tonight in Jesus' name. I want you to boldly pray and break it tonight. By the power in the name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jesus. Break it. Break it. Break it tonight in Jesus' name. Break that cycle. Break that cycle. Don't allow that cycle to continue. Break it tonight in Jesus' name. You will not be thinking evil again. You will not be manipulated again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, I want you to stand up in your hope. And I want you to pray with all seriousness. It's not a matter of sitting down and entertaining certain things. And, and, and uh, trying to pamper the devil. We're going to really pray with all seriousness. Pray and break that cycle of thought. Bind that thought and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Even as you are here trying to pray, he's still trying to manipulate your mind. He's still bringing your mind to certain things that you don't need even to think about. So break it right now. Break that cycle right now. Break that thought pattern right now in the name of Jesus. Break it right now. Break it right now. Break it right now. Break it right now. Break that cycle right now in the name of Jesus. Break that cycle right now in the name of Jesus. Break it, break it, break it, break it. Break that cycle in the name of Jesus. I want you to break it tonight. I want you to break it tonight. Break it tonight. Set yourself free tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Break it right now. Break it right now. Break it right now. Break it right now. Break it right now by the power in the name of Jesus. Break it right now. Break it right now. Break it right now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. Now begin. I want you to say this after me. Jesus, I thank you for revealing this to me. I honor you for your power to set me free. Tonight, I break every cycle of bad thoughts that I have entertained. I break it tonight. I break it tonight. And I pray in Jesus' name that you set me free from these bad thoughts. I come against every power of the enemy. That holds me captive. I bind every evil thought. And I cast it out of my mind. In the name of Jesus. I cast it out tonight. I cast it out tonight. In Jesus name. Now put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your head. On your mind like this. Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now. Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus name. Lord I take every captive. Every thought captive. Every evil thought. I take it captive tonight. By the power in the name of Jesus. I take every evil captive. Every evil thought captive. Every evil thought. I take it captive right now. By the power in the name of Jesus. And I command it to leave your children right now. Every spirit 
that manipulates their mind, that brings evil thought. I command you right now. Leave now. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus is leaving you. Every thought that is not of the Lord. Every thought that the enemy is using to manipulate you. By the power in the name of Jesus. I said by the power in the name of Jesus. I break that thought in Jesus name. And I command that spirit behind it. To lead you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to leave them now. I command you to go right now. Go. 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 Go, 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 go in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus, go right now. Go right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, just put your hands on your head. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, whether you are in your home, in your bedroom, in your living room, the power of God is hitting you right there and is setting you free in the name of Jesus. That spirit that is bringing all those thoughts in your mind, in the name of Jesus, is leaving you right now. I said it's leaving you right now. For I commanded by the power in the name of Jesus. I said I commanded by the power in the name of Jesus to leave you right now. All those thoughts are leaving you right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I break it now. Now you foul spirit, leave them now. Go, 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 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, just go, just go. You have no rights over their lives. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, as they have repented, and the Lord has them, forgiven them. You have no rights over them. And I command you right now to leave them now. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Go right now. Go right now. Go right now. That thought pattern is being broken. And you are being set free now. I said you're being set free now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every evil thought, every evil intention, every evil plan that the enemy has dropped in your mind, I set you free. I break that cycle. I break that cycle right now by the power in the name of Jesus. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. That evil thought that comes into your mind makes you lie, makes you make wrong decisions, make you do the things that you don't want to do by the power in the name of Jesus, that manipulative spirit that is manipulating your mind, I command it to lose its hold right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, set them free. Holy Ghost, set them free right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Just allow yourself because the Spirit of God is right there where you are and He's setting you free in the name of Jesus. He's breaking that cycle. That cycle of thought is going now. In the name of Jesus, you will not think like that again. In the name of Jesus, you are developing that strength, that power to resist the plans of the enemy to resist the thoughts of the enemy in the name of Jesus I demolish every argument I demolish every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God even in your mind in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is setting you free in the name of Jesus wherever you are the Lord is setting you free wherever you are the Lord is setting you free the Lord is setting you free by the power in the name of Jesus. He's setting you free. He's setting you free in your home. Right now. Right now. Right now. And those of you here, the Lord is setting you free. He's breaking that yoke. He's setting you free. He's breaking that cycle right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes, be freed, be freed, be freed, be freed, be freed. Yes, be freed right now, be freed, 
be free right now. Yes, be free right now. Yes, you are being set free. I said you are being set free right now. Right now you are being set free. Yes, you are being set free. I command that spirit to leave you right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Yes, the battle is coming to an end right now. For the Lord is setting you free. I said the Lord is setting you free. 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 Yes, that battle is ending. Yes, it's ending. I said it's ending. It's ending. It's ending. The Lord is setting you free right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. You are being set free. I said you are being set free right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. Yes, be freed right now. I command that spirit to leave you now in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 right now. Go, just go, just leave him. Just leave him right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is setting you guys free. Yes, he's setting you free. That battle is ending. The Lord is ending that battle right now. Right now, right now. Yes, go. I command you to go. Leave him. Leave him right now. Leave, leave, leave right now. Yes, you will leave. I command you by the power in the name of Jesus to leave him now. Leave him now. Leave, leave him right now. Right now, right now, right now. And leave her right now. Leave her right now. Leave, 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 leave. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is touching one, two, three. The power of God is touching the three in that role in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And he's setting them free. Right now, go. Go, just go, just go. Leave her. Leave her right now and leave him right now and leave her right now. Right now. Just leave them right now. In the name of Jesus. I said that battle is ending right now. Go. Go. Yes, go. Just leave. Just leave right now. Just leave right now. I command you by the power in the name of Jesus. I said I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Just go right now. Go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Go. 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 Go right now. Go right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go. Just go. Just go. Just go. Leave them. Leave them now. Leave. Right now. Go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. Go right now. Go. 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 Just leave him. Leave him right now. Be freed. I set you free by the power in Jesus' name. And I set you free by the power in Jesus' name. Yes, be freed now. 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 Be freed right now. In the name of Jesus. Be freed. Be freed. Be freed. Be freed. Be freed. Be freed. The Lord is setting you free. You won't go through this battle any longer. For the Lord is setting your mind free. He takes captive your mind, your thoughts, and he sets you free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just go, go, go. Just leave them. Leave them now. Leave them now. Leave them now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord sets you free right now. The Lord sets you free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now be free. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for the freedom that you are giving unto them. Just go. 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 Leave them. Leave them right now. 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 Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. The Lord is setting you free. I said the Lord is setting you free. 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 Right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Lord is setting you free right now. By the power in the name of Jesus. Go. 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 Yes. Go. 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 Just 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 go. That battle is over. It's over right now. It's over. It's over. It's over. The Lord has set you free. The Lord is delivering you. 
He's delivering you. He's setting you free. He's setting you free. He's setting you free. There's so much battle going on in the minds of the people. There's so much going on. Be freed right now. Be freed right now. Let the Lord set you free. You don't have to go through this. The power of God is right here to set you free. To set you free. Be freed now. 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 now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The battle is gone. The Lord is setting you free. The Lord is delivering you. The Lord is setting you free. The Lord is delivering you all over. All over this place. The fire of God, the power of God is right here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have only five minutes. And I want you to, I want you to really pray right now. And thank the Lord for his freedom. Thank him 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 for his freedom. He sets you free. He sets you free. His power is all over this place. And the Lord is setting you free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. His power is setting you free. So thank him for what he has done with you tonight. Thank him right now. Thank him right now. Thank him right now. Thank him right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. Father, we thank you for what you are doing with us. I give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. I thank you for the freedom that you are giving to your children. Even on the broadcast, wherever they are. In the name of Jesus, I thank the Lord for your life. And I thank him for the freedom that he's given unto you. Father, in the name of Jesus, that which you have begun, may you protect the minds of your people. I plead that the blood of Jesus will cover them. In the name of Jesus, that the enemy will not be able to infiltrate and really accuse them and attack them any longer. By the power in the name of Jesus, I come against every wrong thought. I come against every negative thought. And I destroy it in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord sets you free tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, it's time to... And wherever you are in your home, I just want you to take uh, the Holy Communion. If you don't have it, you can take a bread, biscuit, uh, juice, water, whatever you have to represent uh, the body and uh, 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 his blood. And we'll pray over it before. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now lift it unto the Lord. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I honor you for the bread and I honor you for the juice that we are holding. Holy Spirit of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I call on you to breathe the breath of life into the bread, making it the body of Christ, and into the uh, juice, making it the blood of Jesus. For as they receive life, in the name of Jesus, these elements become the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus. And I pray in the name of Jesus, as your children, Father, eat the, uh, the bread, which is your body, and drink the juice, which is your blood. I pray right now that the, there will be a manifestation of your power, even in our bodies and even in our soul and even in our spirit. Holy Spirit. May there be healings. May there be deliverance. May there be freedom being given to us as we eat the body of Jesus Christ and drink his blood. Father, we thank you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Now I pray right now that may you, Father, in the name of Jesus, set us all free. 
and make us whole and make us worthy even to dine with you. I pray that whatever will be a hindrance, Lord, may you remove it now in the name of Jesus and make us worthy to dine with you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, beloved, Bible says that any time we eat his body, we eat it in remembrance of him. Eat the body of Christ. And any time we drink from the cup, the blood of the covenant, we drink it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. So drink the blood as you remember the pain, the suffering that he had to go through for you to be saved. Drink it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to honor you tonight. We thank you for your faithfulness. And we thank you, Father, for this great opportunity to dine with you. I pray in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood. And there is power in the body. I pray that the power in the name of Jesus begin to manifest in us. Bringing us healing. Bringing us deliverance. Bringing us freedom. And restoring us in the name of Jesus. I pray that anyone who has really taken your body and drank your blood, I pray that, Lord, may you begin right now to touch us in Jesus' name and to set us totally free in Jesus' mighty name.